So today we're going to be considering a lot about adaptive traits and the impact to environment. But let's first stop for and think for a moment about something called camouflage and how it can help an organism to survive in its environment. So camouflage is an adaptive trait that helps an organism to survive by hiding and blending into its background. A really common example in biology is a pepper moss. Maybe a little hard to see, but we have a pepper moth living right here and another one over here that both have colors and patterns that match to their backgrounds really well. How this is adaptive is that if an organism is able to hide in its environment, it either gains an advantage from hiding away from predators or an advantage in hunting down its own food sources. What we're going to be considering in the sim today is yellow color is always an adaptive trait in a yellow environment, just like this australope right here living in a yellow environment. So, agree? Disagree? Let's look into some information and find out. To test this idea about adaptive traits, we're going to take the same population of osterlopes and put them into two different situations. The first one's going to be environment A, where we'll have the yellow seven background and we'll have predators called carnathons. Environment B will be the same yellow seven background, but there will be no predators, no carnathons at all. To understand the impact of the environment on a trait, let's start by looking at the starting histogram for these populations. What I can notice here in this histogram is the starting population has actually a pretty large variation of traits ranging all the way from blue colors to greens and yellows, but there's actually no yellow number 10 here, so we're probably not going to see them come up. If you have access to Amplify at home, right now would be a good moment to pause. Go to tab two, investigating adaptive traits in the sim, and try out page two and three for this activity. So I'm in here in the sim and I'm doing environment A. I already set the background color to yellow seven, and I'm gonna leave the little red predators carnathons left on. And I'm also just gonna zoom in for fun and find a yellow seven individual so we can just see what they do. So hit and run, putting on fast forward. All right, well, run around, having babies, eating. His friends are getting eaten, like that blue one and that one. Yeah, well, he's doing right. Oh, nope, there he goes. Okay, well, let's kind of think about what happens after 50 generations. But one thing I can at least tell, he wasn't getting eaten as much as the blue or the green osterlopes that we saw. So if you're working through paper, now's a good time to pause, take out your paper, copy down this histogram, or go to page five in your packet. Okay, now write or discuss. Does the evidence you see here support or refute the idea that yellow seven is always adaptive in a yellow seven environment? Just remember this histogram here is population and environment A in a yellow environment that does have predators. Okay, now that you've had a moment to discuss, let's go ahead and stop for a sec and look at uh, environment B when there are no predators involved. Well, I'm back in here for the sim. I've set it for that yellow seven environment, but I'm gonna remove all of the carnathons and why don't we have fun and just track a yellow seven for a little bit. So I put on fast forward, I'm just kind of watching and honestly, it seems like everybody's fine. I mean, last time I saw carnathons eating all of the blues and the greens, and right now it doesn't really seem like it matters. Hmm. So a good moment to pause. This is a histogram I got for environment B when there weren't any predators involved. Go ahead and either copy that down or take a look at it in your packet. And once you have this down, pause a sec and either write or discuss. Does this evidence support or refute the idea that being yellow is always adaptive in a yellow environment? Now that you've had the time to think that over, big question here. What's happening in the populations for both of the environments? And how does this overall support or refute the claim that being yellow is always adaptive to a yellow environment? Go and just talk that out. Let's just spend a quick second analyzing the histogram in the situation when there were predators. What I'm noticing here is that it's really only this yellow seven trait that survived with the carnathons. 
every other trait just disappeared and like I noticed when I was watching The Sim, all of the blues and greens and actually some of the yellows still died. Hmm. So what it seems is, since only this yellow seven survived in that environment, seems to me like, yes, this actually seems to support our thinking that being yellow is always adaptive. Now, let's look at environment B. Looking at the environment B histogram, what I can notice here is that kind of oddly, actually, yellow seven completely disappeared, even though it matched a background. And it seems like actually the blues, the greens, they were doing pretty okay, like we noticed when we ran the sim. So thinking about this, it doesn't seem like being yellow seven in a yellow environment does anything here. I would say this evidence actually very well refutes the idea that being yellow in a yellow environment is always helpful or adaptive. So when we think over the overall why this happens, well, what happens is that if a trait's adaptive or not really depends on the environment. If you're in a situation where something's attempting to eat you, your ability to hide is actually a pretty adaptive trait. You're not getting your face eaten off. You survive to live another day. Have offspring, pass on your traits. But, but, if there isn't something like a predator in your environment trying to hunt you down and eat you, it doesn't really matter if you're camouflaged at that point. And that's what we're seeing here is it didn't matter in the end. So no, actually being yellow would not always be adaptive to a yellow environment. There would have to be something like a predator that would give that advantage. So that brings us to a key concept. Key concept. Over many generations, individuals with adaptive traits become more common in a population, while individuals with non-adaptive traits become less common. Go ahead and pause and write this down. All right, and our kind of second key concept to that, whether or not a trait is adaptive depends on the environment. It is worth repeating here, environment is all of the abiotic or non-living things, and all of the biotic things or the living things in an organism's environment.